Hey guys, it's the Coaster Battleman here bringing you an awesome video. I'm just reacting to the 10 most overrated US roller coasters in North America. I'm just going to react to that like thing as I just saw it. So, yeah. And the next video I'm going to make, I'm planning to make, is going to be a suggestion from. JJ O'Connell, he says, could you make a video of a bunch of coaster comparisons, kind of like Top Toe Drags for King Cut, El Toro the Voyage. I'm making a cool video on that, like roller coasters that are similar, Cedar Point roller coaster comparisons, like what coasters that are not at Cedar Point are like very similar to the coasters that are at Cedar Point, so let's get started with this. I'm just reading this little article here and seeing if I agree with this list or not. It says 10 most overrated roller coasters in America. Number 10, Millennium Force. So, like it says, these aren't really terrible rides, which I understand. Millennium Force is my favorite roller coaster. And I feel like Coaster Studios kind of turned this coaster from you know, a really overrated ride to an underrated ride once he went to Cedar Point as his channel just keeps growing and growing and it's kind of like the coaster enthusiasts all agree with Coaster Studios Millennium Force is overrated and all this but I honestly don't agree with that Millennium Force is underrated now like everyone loves it like in the coaster enthusiast standard like of all the coaster enthusiasts Millennium Force is really underrated and it still provides a very smooth and enjoyable experience and it's such a fun coaster I don't think it's overrated I feel like it lives up to the hype. So number nine is King to Ka, and I could sort of agree with this because it is the tallest and the fastest roll. It's the tallest roller coaster in the world, and when it came out, it was the fastest. That's no longer a re its record, but it's still the tallest roller coaster in the world, and it's a very awesome ride. Like, but the, here's the problem: the over-the-shoulder restraints are a huge problem about King to Ka, and I couldn't understand why it's overrated, and it's kind of a rough coaster. Not unbearable, but it is kind of a rough ride, like the launch is kind of rough. While Top Throw Dragster has a very smooth launch, and it has very good restraints. Maybe because, maybe because this coaster is maintained by Six Flags, maybe that's why it's getting so rough. So, yeah. Let's move on to the next overrated coaster, Raging Bull. So, this is one of the original B&M Hyper Coasters, and I've ridden this coaster so many times. Like, I've had great ride experiences on this coaster in 2017, 2016. I didn't have some good ride experiences on it. It just depends on if you're stapled to your seat or not, like, or what role you're in. This is, like, the only element that Raging Bull, to be honest, is missing is airtime. Like, it says here, I could agree with this, that I really wish Air Raging Bull had more airtime. It has good speed, but only, like, a few airtime moments. And there are some trim makes, trim breaks on this ride, so I could understand why it's overrated. I feel like this coaster could have been a better layout, but... You guys have to understand that Great America, even in Raging, when Raging Bull was built before the water park existed, well, it was a Six Flags is a landlocked park, so that's another reason why they did that. Like it'd be nice if they can get another airtime machine. Number seven overrated Viper, and it says, well, I. To be honest, I feel like X Flight is overrated. Viper, it is kind of overrated in my, and not really in my opinion, but I think it is a little overrated. Like this ride does get positive reviews, and Viper, I have to admit, I get give Viper, I, in my opinion, I give it pretty positive reviews. Like I know it in my Viper review, I believe if I ever uploaded one, maybe a long time ago. I said it was a pretty enjoyable coaster, and I thought it was pretty fun, despite its kind of roughness. I feel like it's pretty good. 
number six and number five most overrated coasters, Dark Knight. I'm 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 totally agreeing with this one. Dark Knight is extremely overrated. At an, an, another coaster, another Grand America coaster. Like seriously, the Dark Knight is overrated. Why do people love this ride? Like, I don't get it. The lines are very long for the Dark Knight, and that's another reason why I don't ride it. And it's a very rough ride experience, kind of. The Dark Knight is pretty jerky, and it has aged pretty bad over the past few years. So, yeah. Dark Knight, pretty overrated ride in my opinion, and I totally agree with this. Some people love Dark Knight and think it's amazing, but it's pretty bad. Let's see. Next is Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and I can see why, because this ride is huge. Like, it's a massive ride, but the one element it's missing is airtime. But I don't know why this picture is the Goliath over Georgia, and that's a great airtime machine. Hyper coaster from B and M, but one thing about Goliath, it's great with speed. Like, it has a two hundred fifty-five foot drop, and it goes eighty-five miles per hour, and has some very good helixes and stuff. But the lack of airtime kind of kills Goliath when it comes to being an elite coaster, from being elite and not elite. Like, it's a it's a good ride, but there's a lack of airtime on it. Let's see, number three is Manhattan Express, and I could see why it's overrated. Like, the theming, I would give an A-plus for the theming, because it's surrounded by all these cool buildings and stuff, like this cool city. But here is the problem with Manhattan Express, or the roller coaster. It's extremely rough. I've seen Coaster Studios' review on this coaster, and it's extremely it's just unbearably rough despite being over 200 feet tall. Like, let's just say if this was an Intamin, Intamin with amazing inversions and airtime and it was over 200 feet tall, it would be by far one of the best coasters in the world. But since Togo built it, it's terrible. So, yeah. Togo roller coasters, they're most likely going to be rough. So, yeah. Next is the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. I've... I don't really know much about this coaster, but it's another Orlando coaster. But it, it says here that this coaster has been getting rougher over the years. It's still a decent coaster. But it is kind of rough. And number one, the Beast. I, I seriously disagree with this. The Beast is not overrated. It's underrated. I mean, it's not underrated, It's it lives up to the hype. To be honest, the Beast is probably my favorite wooden roller coaster I've ridden, and I just don't understand why they say this coaster is the most overrated coaster in North America. This is such a classic ride, and it's one of the most unique roller coasters you can find, and it's such an amazing experience day or night. It's such a great experience. I've experienced a, the Beast at day or night a ton of different times and it is unbelievable. What a fun ride. I told, like, a lot of these, a, a, like, some of these I could agree on, but some, like Millennium Force and the Beast and Raging Bull, I totally disagree on those rides being overrated. But I understand Raging Bull's point, but yeah, that was all for this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, and I hope you guys enjoyed. My next video will be tomorrow about the Cedar Point roller coaster comparisons. So, yeah, stay tuned.